What it's been incredibly successful at doing is forcing other economies to slow down. It, it's cut Germany and Japan's growth rates. It can't do that with China because China is not under the control of the United States. So it has to persuade China to commit suicide. Universities, uh, some people who think they might get very rich through uh, uh, the collapse of socialism in China. Well, I, I would characterize the present situation as the great stagnation. But would, most people don't realize that. Thank you very much for accepting our interview. First, we know China's GDP data of 2023 has been published, and it has met the growth target for the year. However, we can see a pervading pessimistic sentiment in both Chinese and international media. Some people claim that China's economic growth rate is about to peak, and in the coming years it will experience a significant slowdown leading to a widening gap between the two economies, I mean China and the US. What are your thoughts on this viewpoint? Do you believe that China can successfully overcome the so-called middle income trap and achieve its long-term goal by 2035? Well, well, the first thing I've got to say is, you know, I've been writing about China's economy for more than 30 years, and I've never seen so much systematic lying and falsification as is appearing in the US media at the present time. It's on, on the economic situation. If, if we take the numbers, let's start with the most immediate situation, that is the numbers for 2023, okay? Uh, China's GDP came in at 5.2%. The US GDP came in at 2.5%. That means that uh, you know immediately that China's economy is growing more than twice as fast as the US. Uh, so how it, it's ridiculous to say that the you know the situation in the US is great and China's bad when China's growing at more than twice as fast. But also the US doesn't even even domestically report its numbers accurately. This 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 is so conscious. I am absolutely convinced because it appears so simultaneously in American media that there are, there is an involvement by the US intelligence agencies to get out, to put out false information on this. I mean a, a small example. The, the Wall Street Journal, pub, on the day the U.S. media uh, GDP was published, claimed that the U.S. GDP last year grew by 3.1%, whereas the U.S. Bureau of Economic Analysis, which is the statistical agency, perfectly accurately reported that the U.S. economy grew by 2.5%. Right. How come the Wall Street Journal puts out a false number? You don't even have to do a calculation. You can look up. You you can just look up the number. Well, because it carried out a statistical sleight of hand, of what Lenin used to call dirty business, or cherry picking. What it did was it took the 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 number between the fourth quarter of 2022 and the fourth quarter of 2023. That's true. The difference was 3.1 percent. But the U.S. economy grew much more slowly during the first. Uh, half of the year, it was well below 2.5%. So this is a number which was just not true that is, that is being publicized. But actually, last year was a good year for the US, 2.5%. Uh, it's above trend growth. Previously, in previous years, the US had been, growth had been below 2%. Why? Because, of course, the US goes through business cycles. So this, this was an up year in the business cycle. If you take a long-term average, let's say 12 years, the US average growth rate is 2.3%. If you take 20 year average, the average growth rate is 2.1%. In other words, the US is growing marginally above um, uh, 2%. If we take the last four years since the beginning of the pandemic, uh, China's economy grew by slightly over 20%. And the US economy grew by slightly over 8%. That is, China's economy was growing two and a half times as fast as the US economy. It is absolutely absurd to say that there is a big problem in China and the US is doing very well. Now, why uh, why some people in the uh, China wish to report such, uh, such fake news, such as that the China's economy is stagnant, the US economy is booming, China's losing ground to its peers. These are the types of headlines which appear in. Okay, well, you have to ask the people in China, why are, they, why are they repeating things which are not even normal distortions, but simply fake news? I, I could give you some um, examples about that, but let's, let's leave that for another side. China's goal, the latest five-year plan, is to double its per capita GDP or its GDP 
between 2020 and 2035, uh, as China's population will probably very slightly shrink in that period of time. That means that actually hitting the GDP target will be enough to get, get the GDP per capita target. Okay, To do that, China has to grow at 4.7% a year between 2020 and 2035. So far in the last three years, it's slightly above that. It's been slightly above 5%. If you take the total growth from 2020, if China was growing at 4.7% a year, it would grow have to grow at slightly over 14% by after the first three years. Actually, China's grown a bit above 15%. So it's ahead of target. The result of which is, therefore, the annual average uh, GDP growth between 2023 and 2035 no longer has to be 4.7%. It has to be 4.6%. So China is, therefore, is exceeding its target. That, that's normal because ever since the reform and opening up, China has always, sometimes it fails on a very short term target, but it um, has always been above on its medium and long term target. So there's no indication that the you, that China's economy is slowing down. Um, and if you look at the consequences of that, the US, if you take, if you continue, the US continues to grow at 2.3%, which is what it's been doing for the last 12 years, it'll grow by 41% by 2035. And China will grow by uh, 100% between 2020 and 2035. Well, that, that will easily make China a high income economy. It's only, it's less than $1,000 per year per capita away from the threshold for high income economy. So it'll hit a World Bank standard for high income economy well before that. And by 2035, that will make China by far the world's uh, largest economy. And, and these are the facts about the situation. And incidentally, by making a comparison to the West with the US, I'm making the most favorable case. The situation for most Western economies is extremely bad. If we take the last four years, Japan's economy during the whole period has grown by 1.1%. That's not 1.1% a year. That's 1.1% in four years. Germany's economy has grown by 0.7% um, in, in four years. Again, not annual, total over that whole period. So the situation is that the situation in the global north economies, so-called the advanced G7, is very bad. And China's growing two and a half times as fast as the US. And therefore, all this stuff that has been put out is a com is absolutely r ridiculous. I have n and I'm used to falsifications in the US media, having been covering this for a very long time. I have never seen so many systematic falsifications appear in, in the US media. In many cases, you don't even have to do a calculation. You can just go and look at a website. You find out the number. In a few cases, you've got you have to do a calculation. That anybody who's studied economics for about six weeks should be able to do. And this is it's a combination of US propaganda and, and rather disgraceful activity being carried out by some of the China, some sections of the Chinese media. China is so far well on its well on its road. It's hitting the targets. I don't want to say by that there's no problems. There are some problems. There's yes. the biggest problem is lack of profitability. There's some problems on uh, sh share prices, lack of private investment, etc. But they've got to put them in that relative situation compared to other economies. In your previous articles, you have mentioned that China should implement the appropriate policies to avoid economic suicide. What does this suicide refer to? In your opinion, what is the real solution to China's real economic problems? Well, economic suicide would mean to uh, to abandon the policies. What does it mean? It means that China's economy, let, let's call it growing around 5%, because if it's five, it grows at 5%, that's fine to hit the targets by uh, by the period that you, by, by 2035, right? Okay. What, what, what it means is that China would adopt policies which slow it down to the rate of growth of a Western economy. Because China is far outperforming the Western economies. Some some people in China want to say that China should adopt the macroeconomic structure of a Western economy. Uh, that is, in particular, it should radically reduce the share of investment and should greatly in increase the share of consumption. Well, of course, if China adopts the macroeconomic structure of a Western economy, then China will slow down to the rate of growth for Western economy, which is the, the median rate of growth for uh, an, a high-income economy is 1.9% a year. 
Well, that would be to commit economic suicide. That is, China slows its economy from 5% a year to to 1.9% a year or slightly over 2% in the case of the US. Well, that would mean, of course, that China would never catch up with the West because if China grows at the same speed as the West, it will always stay exactly the same a distance behind the West. It means that China may not become a high income economy and China certainly won't hit its goals for 2035 because they, as I said, rely now upon 4.6% a year growth being maintained between 2023 and 2035. What would it mean practically? The, the US has got a lot of experience in slowing down competitor economies. In fact, the US is, is not is, the U.S. economy is not speeding up its economy. The U.S. economy is, is slowing down very drastically. If we go back to the, uh, to the 1960s, the U.S. economy was growing at about 5% a year. Now it's growing at 2.1% uh, a year if you take 20-year average. So the U.S. economy has slowed as growth rate has fallen by more than a half during that period. So the U.S. is not succeeding in competition by itself speeding up. What it's been incredibly successful at doing is forcing other economies to slow down. Um, it, it's cut Germany and Japan's growth rate, which if you go back to the 1950s, was 9% a year. Uh, it's reduced the growth rate of uh, Japan's economy to around 1% a year and Germany's to below 1% a year. It's very, very good. It, and this it forced them fundamentally to reduce their rate of investment. The level of investment in Japan, Japan fell from over 30% of GDP down to about 20% of GDP, and its economy decelerated. So the US wants to persuade China to radically cut the level of investment in its economy, because it, then it knows that its economy will slow down greatly, and the US will maintain its lead in its normal way, not by speeding up its own economy, but by slowing down its competitors. The problem that the US faces is that it... Uh, with Japan and Germany, it militarily controls them. They're rely reliant upon the US for military defense. So it could basically order them to carry out pro-US policies. It can't do that with China because China is not under the control of the United States. Therefore, it has, to, if uh, the analogy I use, the US murdered Japan and Germany. It can't murder China. So it has to persuade China to commit suicide. That is, it has to persuade China to adopt the policies that would adopt that would move China to the same macroeconomic structure as a Western economy. I don't even mean capitalism. I just mean to reduce its level of investment in GDP and the Chinese economy uh, will slow down. If 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 the US can slow China's economy to the rate of growth of a normal Western economy, that is one point nine to two percent, then China won't ever catch up with the West and it won't achieve its 2035 targets. That is that's the case. That is why the US spends enormous amounts of money trying to persuade uh, various forces in China, uh, universities, uh, some people who think they might get very rich through uh, uh, the collapse of socialism in China to get China to adopt the wrong economic policies. If you put it in a simple way, it is to try to get China to move towards a Western macroeconomic structure with a very high level of consumption or low level of investment. And in that case, China's economy will slow down. The, if, so if you look at the dangers to the Chinese economy, the biggest danger of all would be to abandon socialism. If you abandon socialism, you'll have the same result as the USSR. You will have a national catastrophe. Uh, in China, but that's not on the agenda. They Even the West doesn't believe it can achieve that at the present time. What it instead wants to do is to try to persuade China to, to adopt economic policies which slow China's economy right down. So that's, that's what committing economic suicide would mean. It can't force China to do it, so it has to attempt to persuade it to do it. My final question is, what do you think the general trend of the world economy will be in the next five years? Will it be a boom or a bust? What is the key to restoring a virtuous cycle? Well, I don't actually think it'll be either a boom or a bust. I think it will be a stagnation. I, I think the best characterization of the present situation, if people want to use the word great because they want to make a comparison to the Great Depression. Well, I, I would characterize the present situation as the great stagnation. By which most people don't realize that actually since the 2008 international financial crisis, world growth is actually much slower than after 1929. 
it's true that in the 1930s, the US economy grew very slowly, but Japan's economy and Germany grew fast. And after 1939, the US economy also began to grow very fast. What the actual growth now is slower than it was in after after 1929. And, and the I don't see any reason there should be a great collapse. Because the real reason that the situation in the 1930s became uncontrollable and produced the Great Depression was the world economy splintered. I don't think there's that. There is some people talk about an erosion of globalization. There is by the US, but that's completely different to a disintegration of the world economy to the 1930s. So I don't see the, any reason there should be a, a great slump. Um, I don't see, how I've, however, any reason why there should be a speed up. Because in order to speed up things, you would have to greatly increase the rate of investment in the uh, in the U.S. and the other major economies. The, the thing which is most closely correlated with the U.S. GDP growth rate is net investment. That is, that is the total level of investment minus the depreciation which takes place in a year. This is very low. It's very it's the lowest since the 1930s, and there's no way in the present time the U.S. is going to increase this without a total radical change in its economy, which is not taking place so therefore my perspective over the next years would be internationally would be what i'd call the great stagnation that would mean that the u.s economy will come in around what it's doing at the present time i don't see any reason it should slow down greatly don't see any reason it should speed up greatly either therefore it'll come in around two percent a year maybe a little bit above the european economies will come around come in around one percent a year maybe a little bit above maybe a little bit below the task which confronts China is how to continue to grow at about, well, 4.6% absolutely strictly to its 2035 goals, but let's call it 5%. Um, how to how to grow, how to continue to grow at 46 to 5% in a situation in which the international economy is going to be basically stagnant. Not That's not true in the global south. Some of the global south economies will grow faster. But if you're looking at, they'll, they'll be growing around 3 4% a year, which is better. So the big challenge for China, which it can achieve, is how to maintain that rate of growth of 4.65 percent a year up to 2035 in a negative international situation. That will have to be driven by its domestic economy, and it'll primarily be determined by maintaining the present levels of investment in economy in in the economy and not going along with all these suicidal things. Sorry, just one other, one other thing. Most immediately, the biggest problem is the situation of profitability which has got to be turned around. People talk, discuss consumption in China. That's not the problem. Retail sales in, in China grew by 7.5% last year. That's rather fast. Uh, the problem is that profits, no matter of big industrial companies, no matter how you measure them, went down. If you measure them by the total recorded profits, they went down by 8.5%. And if you measure them just using the same companies, they went down by 2.5%. Well, then it's no mystery that the share market doesn't go up. I mean, the share prices reflect profits. If profits are going down, you wouldn't expect shares to go up. You'd expect share prices to fall, which is what they're doing. You, ca you can't turn it around just by measures for um, confidence. You've got to turn around the profitability situation. And so the big discussion that should be taking place in China is what has caused this decline in profitability and how to turn around the profitability situ situation. I want to say by international standards, China is doing very well, but it doesn't mean there are no problems um, in China's economy. They've, they've got to be dealt with. You've just got to put them in relative perspective.